Hi, and in today's Microsoft Word tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make this credit card sized identity card in Word. So I've established that a credit card is 8.5 centimeters by 5.5 centimeters. So that's going to be the dimensions that we're going to use for this demonstration. So the first thing I'm going to do is to insert the rectangle to give us a guide to put in the rest of the information. This is just a screenshot of the identity card that we're going to copy. So we'll go ahead and just now insert the shape. So I'm going to go up to the insert tab, along to shapes, click on the drop down and insert this square. You can go down to rectangles here and find it here. Then all I'm going to do is just quickly click and drag. Once we've done that, we're just going to clear the center of this and make it white and make the border black. Make sure you've highlighted your shape and you've got the squares around the perimeter. Go up to shape format, go along to shape fill, click on the drop down and select no fill. Then go up to this icon here and just ensure that your outline is black. When I click off that, you can see that we've got a nice black outline. So we've got a guide as to where we want the edges of our card to be. To ensure that we've got the correct dimensions, if you just click on the shape and highlight it, make sure again you're on shape format, and go along to this section here. So in the top one, which is the height, I'm going to put 5.5. And in the lower one, which is the width, I'm going to put 8.5 and press enter. And there you have your exact shape that you will need to create a credit card size identification card. The next thing we're going to do is just put in the background, which is this world map. If I just extend that, the background is like a world map that's slightly faded. So we're just going to pop that in next. So the way in which we do that is to quickly hop on the internet, type in Pixabay, Click on Pixabay and then just type into the search engine world map and then press enter. Then go up to this drop down section here and just click on vector graphics. So I think I chose this one, uh, this one here. So click on the map of your choice and then just click free download and then it will download to your download folder. Once you've done that, if you go to insert, picture, picture from file, and in my downloads I've got a file here called triangles and it's a PNG. Now it needs to be a PNG for the background to be completely clear. You can import a white one if you want to or indeed a coloured one, but if you just want the world map itself without anything behind it, like a colour, you need it to be a PNG file. So click on the file and then just click insert. And then we need to just resize this image. So we're just going to pull it down. And again, if it doesn't move, it's because you need to sort the wrapping out. So highlight the image, right click, go down to wrap text and select from one of these. I generally choose in front of text because it just makes it a lot easier to move around. And now if you grab the side and pull it so that it fits, then if you want this to go down to the bottom, then you can just pull that down and you can just pull that bit up to the top, completely up to you, and then just click OK. Now the one thing to note with this shape is sometimes it can get in the way when you're trying to click on various things within the identification card. If you have problems, sometimes you need to send things to the back. So just highlight the world map, go up to picture format, go down to send backwards and click send to back. And that way you have stand a chance of being able to select this shape. There we go. Sometimes you need to just grab the shape and move it out the way. Then carry on with editing your ID card and then you can pop the shape back to make sure your dimensions are correct at the end. So we'll just leave it there for a minute. Can move it up with your arrow keys, not quite right. Now we're just going to sort out the transparency of this world map. So you can see now that when I try to click on the world map, I can't because it's hidden behind this shape. So I'm going to move the shape out of the way, click on my world map, go up to picture format, 
and along to transparency. Click on the drop down and then you can select from any of these different transparencies and just make that world map a little less prominent and you can reduce it as much as you like. I think that's the one I used. It might be one more down. Probably about that. Perfect. So now we're just going to put the border back over so that we can just put in the top shape. So the next thing to do is I'm going to insert these purple shapes on the top and the corner. So I'm going to go up to insert, shape, click on the drop down and I'm going to use this shape here which I believe is further down here. It's in flowchart. So click on the shape and all you need to do is click and drag. You don't have to be too accurate because you can obviously adjust these shapes. There we go. And now we'll just adjust the colour. So make sure your shape is highlighted. Make sure you're on shape format and along to these fill and border sections here. I'm going to take the border off my shape. So I'm going to click on shape outline and click no border. Then I'm going to go along to shape fill, click on the drop down and then you've got a variety of colours to choose from here. You've also got more colours which is here so you can click on that. Then you have your colour wheel. You have a number of different options along the top here but you've also got this eyedropper tool here which is incredibly useful. So you can click on the eyedropper tool and then you can click anywhere around your screen and onto the ID card. So if there's a colour that you've seen on the internet that you really like, take a screenshot, import it like I've done here, like, a, like an image, and then you can just put this circle over the top of it, select the colour, which will appear in this box here, and then you colour match something that you've seen on the internet. Once we've done that, we've now got that colour saved into our recents, so we can go ahead and pop these two triangles in. All of this can be adjusted, so if it's not quite right now, don't worry, we can always come back. So go up to Insert, Shape, and again I'm going to choose this right angled triangle here, which is down in Basic Shapes. So again, with this one I'm just going to click and drag outside. Now the important thing to remember with these shapes is that if you pull and drag, the proportions of it will change. So what you need to do is hold down the Shift key. If you hold down the shift key you'll get a perfect right angled triangle and we need that to ensure that the lines are correct on these two shapes here. So once you've done that turn the shape around and then we can pop it into our card. Now again we're going to change the colours of this so again make sure you're on shape format along to the outline, no outline and shape fill. Now because the purple is now highlighted under the bucket you can simply click on that shape and it will turn it to that colour. You don't have to go back in, look on the drop down etc etc. To create the smaller triangle all we're going to do is copy and paste this one. We're just going to pull it to one side holding down the shift key we're just going to click and drag and reduce the size of it and then we're going to move that over the top of our other triangle we're going to go ahead again and change the colour and this time we're going to go up to shape fill, click on the drop down and click on more fill colours. Now because we've already got this colour in the selection box here, you've got this slider along the top here which will allow you to use the same colour but at a different brightness. So this slider will allow you to use the same colour but just reduce the brightness and create a darker shade. So if I move it to about there and click OK and now we've got a slightly darker shade of the same colour. Once you're happy with that we'll go ahead and pop in the logo. So again it may be your own logo or somebody else's logo. You just go along, insert, picture, from file, click on your selection and click insert and again reduce the size of it. So mine won't move again so I'm just going to right click go down to wrapping, right you can't see on that screen so I'm going to go up to picture format here go to wrap text, click on the drop down and select in front of text. Now I can reduce the size of it and just move it to where I need it on my card. Perfect. So let's go ahead now and just insert all of the text. So we go to insert, 
along to text box, click on the drop down and select draw text box. So I'm going to do this outside to begin with. Now by default all text boxes have a white background and a black border and I'll show you that in a second. So if we just do this company name up here, so just type in your text and then if I click off, if I just click and drag this, you'll see that the white background is there. So we need to adjust this text box. So again, make sure it's highlighted, make sure you're on shape format, go along to shape fill, click on the drop down and select no fill, go up to the outline, click on the drop down and select no outline. And now when I select it and drag it, you can see we've got rid of that background. So now I'm just going to adjust the color of the text and the font. So I'm going to highlight my text, go up to the home tab, and then you can use all of these font tools here. I'm going to click on white to change the color. And then I'm going to click on my fonts and select this one, Brasilia here. Then we're going to click and drag that over. Just going to reduce the size of the text box. And again, I can use my arrow keys to gently nudge that to exactly where I want it. Now, so that I don't have to get rid of the background and the borders all over again, I'm just going to copy and paste this text box to put the address in. So I'm going to move it over. Then I'm going to just double click inside to ensure that I can now type. I'm going to press Command or Control A to highlight the entire text. Then I'm going to go up and change the font back to Calibri. Then I'm going to reduce the size of the text and then type in my selection. Now as you can see my text has disappeared so again go inside, highlight it all, reduce the size until I'm happy, reduce the size of the box and then you can move that to wherever you want. Now for this particular demonstration I'm going to move this text over to the right hand side and to do that we just need to Make sure you're on the Home tab. Go along to these icons here. I'm going to click on this Align to Right so my text will line up to the right of this box. OK, great. Now on to the Identity card. So again, copy and paste. Move that text box down. Double click inside. Command or Control A. Change the text back to black and then type Identity card, then I'm going to increase the size. Now what you will notice on this card is that the characters are spaced out more than on here. The way to do that is to highlight your text, then right click over the text and go down to font. This menu will appear, go to advanced, Go down to spacing, click on the drop down and click expand. Use the arrow keys up and down here to then expand those characters to exactly where you want them and then just click OK. And then we'll just move that out. Now we've aligned this text box text to the right and because we've copied and pasted it, it's done the same here. So I'm just going to double click and go to center. So we just get that in the center of that box. Perfect. I just use my arrow key to move that up and then we'll just go ahead and put this photograph in here. So grab your photograph, go up to insert, picture, picture from file. Okay and once again when your picture is inserted you need to adjust the wrapping and of course the size. So we'll just reduce the size and then we'll go up to make sure you've selected the picture and you're on picture format, wrap text in front of text. Now as you can see we need to crop this because the photograph actually used is cropped, we haven't got the whole of this photo. So the way in which to do that is to make sure you're on picture format, go along to the crop tool and click. You'll see these black markers appear, make sure you hover your cursor over the top and click and drag. Now don't worry, you can reduce the size of it once we've cropped it, so it doesn't have to be this size. It's about to there, and about there, and then press enter. 
And then we can just go ahead and reduce the size of it to fit it into our card. Okay, now we just need to put the black board around the outside. So double click on your image and then you'll see that this menu bar comes up on the right hand side and we need to go down to this bucket icon here. Click on the bucket, go down to line, click solid line and here you can change the colour of it if you want to. So if you want it to be purple to match the card you can but I'm more interested in going to width here and increasing the width Yep, about 1.2. So there's your outline for your picture. And now we'll go ahead and insert this barcode at the bottom. Again, insert, text box, draw text box, click and drag. So the reason I've decided to do another text box instead of copy and pasting is because they've now got their own formatting. And all I'm going to do is just quickly take out the shape fill Make sure on shape format, click on the drop down, no fill, click on the drop down, no outline. And then all I'm going to do is type in his name. Now in order to change this into a barcode, you need to go ahead and download the barcode font from Google. And it's very simple to do it. And I have done a video about it recently. So if you want to watch that video, I will put it in the link below. And all you need to do again, so just highlight the text, go to the Home tab, click on the drop down and select your font. So I think we use this one here. And then your font's been changed into a barcode. I chose the barcode which has the words underneath, but you can choose the barcode which doesn't. It's completely up to you. To increase the size of it, it's just another font, so you just use the font tools in the Home tab, and I'm just going to use the Increase Font tool here. That's about right. And then just reduce the size of the text box. Once I've done that, I can just pop it underneath his photograph. So that's a little bit big, so I'm just going to double click, Command or Control A to highlight it, and just reduce the size of it and just use my arrow key. Perfect. So now I'm going to go ahead and create all of this different text here. And again, in exactly the same way, we're just going to use text boxes. But once you have created one, you can just copy and paste them all. So insert, text box, draw text box. Let's just put in a employee identification number. Now I suggest that you stick with the same font because it's just a lot easier to copy and paste it. All I've done here is just reduce the size of it and this one I've just colored. So I'm just going to check off there. I just need to customize the box again. So highlight it up to shape format, shape fill, no fill, outline, no outline. Now I will reduce the size of this text, double click inside, command or control A, up to the home tab and then reduce font size. So if we just take the box inside and make sure it's the right size. So I think that's about right. So once I'm happy I'm just going to copy and paste it first move that out and then I'm just going to reduce the size of this box. There we go. And then double click inside, command or control A and then employee ID. And for this one again I'm going to reduce the size. And just pop that underneath. I will show you how to align these all in a little bit. But first we'll just get all the text in. So copy and paste that one. The reason I'm going to copy and paste that top one is because I want the words to be the same size. I don't have to increase or decrease the font size if I use this one. And we'll just move that up. 
and then copy and paste this one because I want it to be the same size again. Command and Control A, move that one into there. So with this one, I just highlighted it, I made it bold, I changed the color, so I went to this color icon, font color icon here, and then you can select from your recent colors. So I'll select this one. In fact, I think the dark one would look better. Yeah. Okay, and you can play around with all of this as much as you like. So what we're going to do now is just line them all up. So the best way to do it is to click on the lower box and then simply hold the command or control key down and then just select all the boxes as we go up. Then go up to Shape Format along to the Align tool. Click on the drop down and select Align to Left. And that will make sure everything is lined up to the left here. Go ahead and do the same with this side. Shape Format, Align, Align to Left. And they're all nicely lined up. Now once you're happy with the alignment, you can actually turn these into a group so that they will all move as one. So again up to Shape Format and along to this icon here which is Groups, click on the drop down and select Group. What that will do now is allow you to move this whole section around as one entire group, which is really useful. You can ungroup it again and move it around, so don't think that once you've done it that's it, you can't go back and change it because you can. So go ahead and do that with the other side. So once you've grouped them all together, you can now go ahead and move them so that they're aligned where you want them. Okay, I think that's about right. Let's just move this up a bit. Now, if you hit your command or control key down and select the box, what we can now do is align these up to the center. So highlight this one, command or control key, click on the outer rectangle, go up to shape format, to the alignment tool, click on the drop down, and select align to center. That will ensure that this part here is perfectly lined up. I'm just going to nudge those down because they are a little bit close to the identity card section. So again I'm using my arrow keys just to nudge that down. Okay so now you can keep this border on this ID card or you can take it off, it's completely up to you. It's great if you want to cut them out, obviously you're going to want to print this off and cut it out. You can either leave the black border or you can cut it off, it's completely up to you. If you want to get rid of it then obviously just highlight it and click the delete key. Or if you want to keep it, you can bring it to the front. Because as you can see at the moment, the border disappears behind the purple shape. So click on it, go up to Shape Format, go to this Bring Forwards icon, click on the drop down and select Bring to Front. And that way you can see the border has now come to the front. If you want to copy and paste the entire card, then what you'll have to do is group all of the elements together and then copy and paste it. However, in order to do that, it's quite tricky with this border around the edge. So if we just take the border out and then highlight all the elements by clicking, hold the command or control key down, just carry on clicking through all the different elements that you've put in. Picture, barcode, shape, Once you've got all those elements, go up to Picture Format, go along to Group, click on the drop down and select Group. Now you should be able to move the whole thing around as one. Once you've done that, you can simply put this shape back over the top and hopefully then you can hold the Command and Control key and select Section Underneath. Okay. So what you might have to do is just move these around a little bit, copy and paste them and then just nudge them back up because sometimes they can be a real challenge to try and highlight both of them when they're basically on top of each other. So highlight them both, go to shape format, group them, you don't have to group them but if you want to that's fine and then just simply copy and paste 
and you'll get another card. Then all you need to do is just go back up to group, ungroup, and then you can just nudge them. Then just click on one and then just nudge it down like that. And then this one you can do exactly the same. Just ungroup it, click on the element, whether it's the square or the card, and then you can just nudge it down. Then you can go ahead and, and print as many off as you want to one sheet of A4 paper, or you can just do one. Now, obviously, you can just get rid of the picture and then just insert a different picture. And then go ahead and in this section here, which again, you might have to remove the border because it's a bit of a pain. Here, you can just ungroup everything. And then you can just go ahead and go into these sections here and change the IDs, the names, nationality, and addresses if you want to. So sometimes these little markers appear with the grammar issue. So just remove that outline again, click inside, ungroup, just click off a minute and click back onto that section there, double click, and then highlight that number and just press 15. And that will disappear whilst you print these off. It may reappear again. I've tried to get rid of it. If anybody does know how to get rid of it, please don't hesitate to leave me a comment and tell me how to do it. Because I've tried to get rid of it and then it keeps coming back. So don't forget to get rid of it if there's a grammar issue there before you print it off. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.